The current administration under the leadership of President Goodluck Ibele Jonathan understands young people and the challenges they face. But more so, it recognizes their energy and ideas and has initiated various schemes targeted specifically at the youth to address their individual needs and ensure their success every step of the way. When you look around, you see a lot of youths around walking, begging at least to even survive. The not educated and the ones that are even done serving, it's still the same thing. There are a lot of youth right now and even in support of going to school because they think going to school is, like, is now a waste of time. Every day, different schools produce different graduates and uh, this NYC scheme produces more coppers, so we have more numbers of unemployed youths. The rate of unemployment in Nigeria is not encouraging at all. Statistics show that a majority of unemployed youths are female. To deal with these challenges and more, the federal government has initiated schemes and programs to offer the much-needed support to start up sustainable businesses. These schemes include the NYSC Venture Prize Competition, Entrepreneurship Development Centers EDCs, the Micro Small and Medium Enterprise Development Fund MSMEDF, the Youth Employment in Agriculture Program YEAP the Agricultural Credit Guarantee Scheme, ACGS, and the Youth Enterprise with Innovative Program, UWIN, amongst others. In the 2007-2008 service year, the Central Bank of Nigeria introduced the annual Venture Prize competition among serving core members. The goal of the initiative is to reduce the endless search for white-collar jobs stimulate entrepreneurial spirit of the youth core members during their service year and empower youths by encouraging them to take ownership of their entrepreneurship ideas. The competition is open to serving national youth core members in every batch of a given year and covers all legal business concepts except commerce. The competition has two award categories state and national, where the best 10 business proposals from each state are considered for the award. Since the beginning of the initiative, 440 core members have received awards in the two categories, which comprise of nine national and 431 state winners. In addition, winners are given a certificate of merit and invitation to participate in the capacity building program and are also linked to banks to finance their projects. My name is Olayin Kamaikeola Kiola. CBN came with a lecture talking about venture price. You have to write a business proposal. When you write a business proposal, you know, when you, you have you be selected and all the rest like that. I wrote the business proposal, then you know I submitted to CBN. You know, I was so surprised when the, they called me that I'll be selected among the winners in the state. At that point, that was when the first grant of 200,000 Naira for the state came in. I did my registration, I got one or two things, I got some small machine out of the money, you know, and I got a laptop from it because I understand the fact that what I want to do is different from other mechanics on the field. And then I want to have an edge over them. My name is Hajar Abayo. It was during my NYSC that the CBN um, members came to the CAM and then explained that they have been what fostering of um, projects if an entrepreneur or any business of your kind you can make a plan and then you send it to them and I said okay I will write on my beat making. In fact I think at my little level, I've done so much for my environment. I've trained officially. People that have actually come for post-camp training, they are like NYC members, they are, up, they are like up to like 50. And even the other mechanics that have actually come for training, they are numerous. Actually, our business have really contributed to the economy because many people that would have been unemployed after their service, those couples that come here, learn, at least they have something to do. We have employed others and those that have worked under us are still employing other people. 
For the recent graduate opting for entrepreneurship instead of paid employment, the NYC Venture Prize competition is the right place to start. We need something like, you train me, teach me how to get a fish, then I get a fish. That's what we actually need in Nigeria. To me, I think skill acquisition will be more beneficial to me. Because sometimes you, you, this idea could just flash into your mind, but you now find out that you don't even have the skill to execute. If they could provide a place where we can go and learn something, and at the end of it, there could be something given to us to start up our own business. When somebody trains you, you already know you have a handwork, you have a job, through there you can be able to employ others, and then it reduces your self-reliance on the government. The federal government recognized this deficit in skilled manpower, which led the CBN in 2006 to actively initiate, support, and complement the efforts of other government agencies by establishing Entrepreneurship Development Centers, EDCs, in each of the six geopolitical zones to foster entrepreneurship skills. The CBN provides a significant part of the initial takeoff capital as well as running costs, with each center providing counterpart funding and evidence of their ability to sell finance over time. The initiative targets school leavers, tertiary institution graduates, and owners of existing businesses. The candidates undergo training for 12 and 16 weeks, respectively, for tertiary institution graduates and school leavers. Built into training and post-training periods are counseling, internship, mentoring, and attachment to incubators. The host state governments provide infrastructure and financial resources for startups and link graduates to finance particularly micro small and medium enterprise development funds through the microfinance banks. From inception in April 2008 to April 2013, the pilot EDCs collectively trained 41,828 individuals, created 11,414 jobs, and posted 1,743 trainee access loans. My name is Enoy Det James. I am the MD CEO of IT Licious Beauty Spots. I'm into hair care and the sales of beauty care products, hair and beauty care products. One of those days I, I had issues with one of my staff, you know. So one of the clients that was there was like, I think you need to go through EDC. I was like, what is EDC? She now you know, just gave me a beautiful review. And I decided to go through it. And every day I was just like, oh God, I needed to have gone through EDC before I go into business. My name is Abisayo Oremuiwa. And um, I am presently the MDCEO of Novel Express Tasty Foods. Basically, we process yam flour, the one popularly known for making amala. I heard about the EDC program, say about November, November yeah, in um, 2013. I was out of town for a while, about two, three months, and then when I got back in, I saw the post, the sign post, at the front of the center. So. I was curious, you know, seeing the CBN part kind of got my attention and then entrepreneurial thing. I came in applied, but I didn't start until January 2014. My name is uh, Dajo Abraham. I'm into fashion design and laundry services. The EDC program, I think I, I, the first person that told me about the program was my uncle. I went there got deformed and uh, got myself registered. I have just gotten to know beyond reasonable doubt that anything is possible, you know, truly. Not just about the fact that somebody somewhere you hear the story, yeah, there's this person, he did this and he did and It actually did happen that that did happen, you know. So you being in that position now where you're beginning to write history and then maybe at some point somebody gets to hear your story and then they think it's just a story, but it did happen. If this is a platform where such a thing can happen, if you come in, you're cool headed, you know, humble enough to listen, and you try to have passion to what you do, try to find your path, don't follow the crowd, just find your path. They are ready to help you do whatever it is you want to do. We are talking about business, how to be very, very accountable in your business, be disciplined and focused. And I must tell you, before I joined the EDC, 
had been a very I had been a business person. And until then, I never knew that I was missing out on a lot of things as a businessman. If I had gone through EDC before I started my business, most of the uh, mistakes I made then, I wouldn't have made them. I did not know what it means by taking stock. I don't know what it means by, okay, I used to write down my work, but I don't know that you have to, you have to write down your consumer, your expenditures in a month. Otherwise, I would employ 20 people in the business. I don't know that if that was affecting my profits. I was just running the business the way I like. We had to go for internship to go practice on the field with existing companies in line with our choices of business. The government has really done a lot. I am one of the fan of the government because they really tried. It's only when you don't go, when you don't get go for the information, that's when you don't know what's happening. But since I've gone to EDC, I've been open to other things that are running. With the help of the EDCs, would-be entrepreneurs will develop the skill to successfully start, expand, diversify, and manage their business enterprises. Yeah, giving loans and grants are benefit to the youth for empowerment. It's, it's very good because uh, a lot of youth have different skills and talent, the creative talent they could build up with that capital money given to them, and they could set up a big industry. Because I know that uh, youths work something out of nothing. So if you bought all the, the problem is the, the, the capital. We have a lot of uh, artists out there, the young people that have potentials in them, that if the government can assist them by either giving them loans, it can help them to stabilize themselves and poverty will be alleviated. Young entrepreneurs needing financing for their innovative startups should look no further than the federal government's micro, small and medium enterprise development fund. Launched by His Excellency, President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan in 2014, the 220 billion Naira micro, small and medium enterprise development fund focuses on providing the large number of SMEs access to finance from participating financial institutions, PFIs, to enable them lend at lower interest rates. My name is Shimite Katung. I am the president for Quintessential Business Women Association. It is a social business enterprise focused on the agriculture and solid mineral value chain. We have three units comprising of women in cooperative, youths, mixed gender, and then the women professionals. What we have is 200 youths from every local government that can enroll. Because of what the youths have to do in this group, we were looking for specific kind of youths. Youths that were interested in ICT, youths that are very good with devices, and youths that are sweet talkers. Now, we have a lot of them in Nigeria. Young entrepreneurs can apply for the fund through a microfinance bank, finance company, financial cooperative, or NGO microfinance institutions. The fund is mainly to help people build the Nigerian economy. This is uh, what the characteristics of the fund is. I am not one that promotes grants so much so. I believe that money has been in the system from the day Nigeria was and it will continue to be in the system after. So if we could teach people to assess funds, then they will always have access to funds. It is not very easy to assess funds based on some of the rules and regulations. This is why I think the MSMEDF uh, program has been one of the gentlest and kindest for uh, people that don't have uh, the housing and all the other things other monies require. It is also a single digit uh, fund which is collected at 9% and the fund has its own philosophy which subsumes the philosophy of the financial institution that will be a conduit with which people assess the funds. I do not believe the youths are the leaders of tomorrow. I believe they're the leaders of today. So youth is a time when you make right decisions so that you will not work for money, but money will work for you. When you talk of in the area of agriculture, 
when they not improve like the revamping of agricultural sector by this present government it also helps youth because we are deviating from our farming now focusing on the oil what happens when the oil goes out for example the crash in the oil prices recently affected the economy because of what our over reliance and dependence on the oil sector so if we revamp the agri sector it also helps the youth do you think that can really help us to get back to what we were even better is agriculture there is nowhere in the world that food is not needed. For those interested in branching out into the agricultural business sector, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development initiated a major job creation program for youths in rural areas with the Youth Employment in Agriculture Program, YEAP. The aim is to create employment for young men and women along area-based priority agricultural value chains. YEEP provides a framework for supporting targeted state-level investments to complement and leverage ongoing programs for youth employment in agriculture. The program will empower two subset of youth in a gender-equal way. The young and innovative medium-skill entrepreneurs involved in the creation of modern agribusiness and value chain enterprises, as well as local farming youths who are interested in market-oriented agricultural production, small-scale processing, input supply, and marketing. My name is Ayo Lajiga. I'm an investor in uh, Food Pro Limited, uh, and uh, I'm a director in, in the company. It's not my day job because I work as an investment banker, but uh, you know I see a lot of value in that space. So you know most of my investments are going in that direction at the moment. Cashew processing, you know, is is one of those areas where if you can get it right, you know, there's a lot of value there. My name is Mandir Umar. I'm the MD CEO of DNET Integrated Farms Limited, and DNET Integrated Farms Limited was established in 2011. I was watching NTA Network News. Then there was a program they were doing about agriculture. I saw the present Minister of Agriculture, Dr. Akinyeme Adeshina, and he was discussing agri-business. He made a statement that really got me interested. He said, and I quote, the youth in this country should start seeing agriculture as business. When I went to Youth and Gender Department, I met with uh, the head of the department, and she told me that I need to come and uh, I should drop my name and I should choose the area of interest. So I decided to choose fish farming and uh, I was shortlisted. I was sent to New Bosa with two of my other staffs. We went there, we learned things about fish, how to hatch, how to feed, how to take care of the fishes. My name is uh, Dr. Temitokwe Aroge. Uh, company name is Harog Bao Highlight Agro Services Limited. We have been able to develop a strong partnership with the state government here in line with the uh, present policy of government. And uh, some of the moribund factories that are cassava uh, processing factories, we've been able to get that from the state government on a lease, long term lease agreement for us to turn around the place to um, install very high powered. Uh, Machineries. At the beginning of this year, we were sitting about 100 people. As we speak today, it's 300. And of those 300, about eight, not, almost 90% are women. You know, and that again, if you if you understand, you know, I mean, the value and the importance that women bring to the development of society. I mean, we would like to think, yes, you know, we are doing agriculture, but we're also doing quite a lot of uh, women empowerment as well. Under the fish farm estate, you'll not believe it. I was giving 15 million naira in three installments. If you're thinking of funding, go to the CBN. You'll see that there are a lot of programs laid out for youths and farmers, e.g. NASA, CACs, and so many other programs. And even every bank now has an agricultural desk. The farming population are getting aged. They are, they are growing old, and we don't have people to replace them. So the policy is strategic, is direct on point, because it's aiming at um, generating and also developing new set of farmers that uh, we encourage the conventional traditional farming and also uh, with input, direct input from government. You're now in DNET farms, averagely every quarter, every four months, we harvest at least 50 tons of fish. 50 tons of fish, that's about 50,000 kilos. 
So I think if you will ask me about this transformation agenda, I can tell you that you can see me, I'm already transformed. I think the YIP program is a policy in the right direction. And I urge anyone who has the opportunity as a youth to be part of this program to get involved. When you see the value from a job creation, food security, which is the same thing as national security, it just makes sense to do this. The target is to reach 740,000 market-oriented agricultural producers and 18,500 young agri-entrepreneurs over a five-year period. Young entrepreneurs looking to grow their agri-business. The CBN Agricultural Credit Guarantee Scheme, ACGS, encourages commercial banks to lend to those engaged in agriculture by providing a 75% guarantee for loans on crop and livestock production, processing and marketing. The 5.95 billion Naira fund is managed by the Central Bank of Nigeria, which is responsible for its day-to-day -day operations. My name is Jumaino Alfa. I'm a farmer, poultry farmer. I got involved with ACG through First Bank. The process was um, to give some collateral, and I, which I gave them. Before they gave me, they came and assessed my farm, and they uh, after the assessing, they, they got what they wanted and they approved it for me. I used the loaf to buy uh, cattle, uh, that is uh, cows. I bought about six and now I have about almost 15 of them. Getting the loaf has helped me to a lot. It boosts my farm and it makes me to buy more cows and which helped me to repay my loan before the time I was given to pay off and I pay before the time. The cumulative number of loans guaranteed under the scheme since inception stands at 803,264, while the cumulative value of loans given since inception stands at 62.05 billion naira. The rate of unemployment in Nigeria, going by what I used to know, have actually improved. That means reduction in unemployment. I want to encourage the government to like work hard to like bring the youth up, so that our tomorrow, our tomorrow generation will be uh, very, very encouraged. But what I believe is that not just the government, the private sector too has a lot to do. Maintaining a startup isn't easy, especially when there's only so much finance an entrepreneur can acquire through loans and private capital. Enter the Youth Enterprise with Innovative Program, You Win, an innovative annual business plan competition aimed at job creation by encouraging and supporting aspiring entrepreneurial youth in Nigeria to develop and execute business ideas. The program is a collaboration of the Federal Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Youth Development, Ministry of Communication Technology, and Ministry of Women Affairs and Social Development, with support from the World Bank, UK Department for International Development, and the organized private sector. The competition culminates in the selection of 1,200 award winners in each cycle. The goal of you Win is to generate jobs by encouraging and supporting aspiring entrepreneurial youth and women to develop and execute business ideas that will lead to job creation. I'm Chidi Kanio, I'm the CEO of Niza Jury, and I'm 22. Yeah, you heard right, 22. And well, this is my place. Basically, we make, we make jewelry, we make dresses, we train people on jewelry making, and we train people on dressmaking. I got to know about you through a friend of mine, and I applied for it the way I've applied for hundreds of other competitions. I didn't take it to heart, I mean, I just applied for it. My name is Engineer Raji Ibrahim. We hear a lot about mechanical engineering, civil engineering, all manner of engineering, but you seldom heard about robotic engineering. A brother came to my house. You see, this stuff I keep talking about. Have I, did I heard about a uh, uh, win that they do something? I said, no, I saw something like that. He said, it's true. I said, okay, we went to cafe and I fill it up. Though it was hard at the beginning because of the service, we fill it up and I was waiting. 
Uh, suddenly, I got a bill that uh, I was selected as one of the, you know, successful, the first batch. My name is Nisi Ibiang. I'm the proprietress of Lori Nisi Crash and School. We've been in operation for over a year now. The urine program I got to watch the inauguration of and um, I thought it was a very laudable idea but I didn't think it was going to work. I applied for five million but I got six million naira and then when, when we went for the verification in Abuja, Ministry of Finance, I was so excited. I was like, hey, I'm seeing every other person so getting reduced. Why did my get increased? And I'm like, and uh, I was told I didn't put um, enough money for my running costs, so the extra one million is meant to be running costs. I'm like, wow, they know what they are doing. I went, looked for the newspaper and saw it, and it was all screams in my house that morning. I actually took a time out to shout. I was so excited, honestly. Today I've gotten my first, my second and my third tranche, and I've invested all of it. And at last, bam, we got an alert that we have been paying a first tranche. The first robot I built was undercar inspection robot, you know, because I know that is a, a lot of challenges. You will open my eyes, my mind, and to a lot more than just giving me a grant. And they taught me how to do it right. They taught me how to do my accounting, how to do my bookkeeping, how to do my marketing, how to budget right. I learned so much from them, really. Yeah, and I, I don't think going to a business school is going to teach me anything different from what I learned at the Ewing workshops. There's something I just want to tell our youth out there. We should, this uh, perception that the moment I finish my NYC, I should just go and apply for a job and get a job. We should let that be a thing of the past. We shouldn't be thinking about that, that I'll go and apply for a job. No. It should be when I finish my NYC, if I before I finish my NYC, I should be thinking how I will create a job and employ one or two people working with me. This idea was a welcome development actually, and I'm glad to see that it worked, you know, and I was able to use it well. You know, so it was it was it was a dream come true for us youths in Nigeria and for women too, because women were given the opportunity to win and We've also utilized it well too. Some important things to know about UWIN. UWIN is an equity contribution to your business. It is therefore not a loan, but a grant. Award recipients will be paid according to the needs of the business and specific milestones stated in the business plan. Award recipients must be registered with CAC before disbursement of funds. Award recipients will operate accounts using their registered companies with any of the participating commercial banks prior to disbursement. Award recipients must sign a grant agreement with the managers of UWIN before disbursement of funds. Entrepreneurial development, skill acquisition, capacity building, agricultural development. These are all essential pillars upon which the current administration has built its policies to help entrepreneurial youth and women develop their talents, reduce unemployment, foster entrepreneurial activity, and ensure mass food production and other allied products. Through these valuable schemes and programs, the federal government has ensured the growth and endurance of the valuable resource that is and always has been the Nigerian youth. Not just the future, but indeed the present belongs to the young people of Nigeria. As they take on the responsibility of contributing their quota in building the biggest and strongest economy on the continent.